Photographers, hello, video two, uh, and today is a bit of a geology fest. So if you study geology or you're interested in rocks, then this is going to be right up your street. If you're not too keen in rocks, then uh, it's a bit of bad luck, unfortunately. So <laughs> uh, make notes, any sketches, jot down the definitions of keywords. Important thing with this as well, if you've got any questions or things aren't quite clear and making sense, not a problem, jot your questions down and bring them to lessons and I'm sure I'll clear it up. Uh, Okey pokey, right then, let me get that out of the way. Right, so what are we going to do today? Uh, well, like I said, 2B.2 .2 and a lot of 2B.3. Uh, is going to need a basic understanding of uh, geology, geological structure, lithology, uh, rock types and things like that. So this is kind of obviously links to the spec, uh, and but it kind of is the background kind of understanding for all of this section. All right. Obviously, we're going to be doing stuff in class that builds on this, this basic knowledge, all right? So what are we gonna learn? What do I want to take away from today? Uh, you're gonna know the difference between lithology and the different elements of geological structure, because there are some differences. So far, we've just referred to rock type as geology, which is kind of true, uh, but we're gonna be a bit more specific with terminology. And then, if there's one thing I want you to take away from today and not get mixed up, it's the difference between dip and profile. All right. What keywords are you going to learn today with a bit of look? Lithology, geological structure, concordant and discordant course we touched on last lesson. And then all these things are the different elements of geological structure. Strap yourselves in, folks, for a rocky ride. Excuse the very sad pun. Here we go. Okie cokey, right then. First key word is lithology. And lithology just means, very simply, the rock type and its characteristics. So, last lesson in class, we had a kind of touching a feel of different kind of rocks and you were all excited when you did that uh, I could tell you loved your rocks uh, yeah so this photograph here the lithology of this is bring it to front, is granite and it is an igneous rock its characteristic is it is very resistant and very hard alright creates cliffs like our most famous example that we mention every lesson Conic air. This photograph, which I'm enlarging now, the lithology in this photograph is unconsolidated and it is boulder clay. Its characteristics are it is very soft. All right, it's easily eroded. So lithology is what rock type is it? Tell me something about that rock type. Is it hard or is it soft? Is it porous? Is it permeable? Yeah. However, geological structure, on the other hand, is there's a little bit more to it than just rock type. All right. We want to think about well, how are these rock types uh, aligned? Are they layered like a cake? Are they? How are they aligned in relation to the coastline? Uh, and then there's other different kind of. Uh, types of geological structure which we're going to look at in a minute such as layers are they jointed rocks is the is the are the rock bands folded uh, what is the angle of the rock in relation to the sea is it sloping towards the sea is it sloping towards the land is it horizontal is it vertical uh, so that's what we're going to look at in a little bit more detail in a sec so the first element a geological structure is how are rock bands aligned in relation to the coastline all right and we've touched on these so i'm not going to spend ages on them uh, there's two types concordant coasts 
your rock bands run parallel to the coastline so they're actually in line in this case parallel to the sea all right discordant coastlines your rock bands alternate between hard and soft and the perpendicular or 90 degrees to the ocean in lesson we're going to look at how that causes different types of landforms all right Yeah, folks, in lesson, we're going to look at landforms on a concordant coast. What I want you to do in your booklets is, after you've watched this slide, is read page the, all the information on page 17 in your booklets, which is about headlands and bays on a discordant coast. So take you probably five minutes, highlight the information, have a good read of it, uh, and then complete the, the sketch of how bays and headlands are formed uh, in the space provided. I mean, I'm just going to talk you through it, so this might help you a little bit. Here we see a discordant coast where bands of rock are alternating between hard chalk and less resistant clays and sands. All right, and so that's as input. That's what it was there. Yeah. If we assume that marine processes another input marine inputs are uh, from the waves are destructive and it's a high energy environment then what's going to happen is this process of differential erosion which is another key word and differential erosion just means different lithology is eroding at different speeds so it's different that's where differential comes from so the chalk is resistant to erosion so it doesn't erode and we get headlands form the clay erodes much faster and we get bays or bay head beaches forming as well uh, now the important thing to kind of note about headlands and bays is the energy levels between the two all right so headlands tend to be a high energy environment. They're very exposed. And I am terrible at writing with this mouse. I've got to bill a new pen to the department, I think, because it's terrible. So yeah, headlands, high energy, really exposed environment. They stick out to sea. Your bays are much more sheltered. S for sheltered. Uh, and that's why in this example here we see a bayhead beach because deposition is the dominant process in a bay, generally speaking, where headlands are more exposed and erosion is a more dominant process. All right. So if you're ever on holiday, folks, and you've got a lilo or a rubber dinghy, uh, if you go and stand on the headland that juts out to sea and go on your lilo, you'll probably find uh, it's not a very pleasant experience. You're probably going to get, uh, you know, it's probably going to be high energy destructive ways, probably going to be sending you uh, upturned on your lilo. However, if you go to somewhere like San Antonio Bay in Ibiza, the clue is in the name, folks, it's a bay, then you go in your lilo, yep, far better to to kind of uh, just chill we 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 drink uh, you're not going to get upturned much more sheltered low energy constructive ways and there's going to be lots of people sunbathing on the beach all right happy days right then your second kind of element a geological structure that we're going to look at uh, so the first one is concordant and discordant coast. The second one, if you just write the word bedding planes. Uh, and the definition of what a bedding plane is, it's just a natural break in layers of sedimentary rock. All right. So in class, we had a look at chalk, for instance. You've got limestone, sandstone, and we need a little bit of a geological kind of lesson here. We need to go back probably a few million years at least and think about how these rocks were formed. And if you just use your eyes for a second, have a look, you can see that they're kind of layered, all right? So just where my cursor is, 
uh, and in this case they're layered horizontally and sedimentary rocks are formed by uh, lots of pressure building up over time so as more sediments deposited it's compressed and it's compacted so it builds up over time in layers all right so you can actually see kind of the history of, of these rocks uh, being formed in front of your very eyes the older rocks will probably be at the at the bottom uh, and the newer rocks will be at the top all right now the key thing about uh, most of these elements of geological structure is it increases the exposure to erosion it's kind of a weakness yeah if you think of the igneous rocks that you handled in class uh, last lesson you know the interlocking crystals it's kind of there's no kind of uh, weakness if you look at this you can see uh, if the waves crash into these yeah surface area is increased uh, and, and you've got weakness all right so you find bedding planes primarily with sedimentary rocks. Right, your next element of geological structure is a joint. Now a joint is a vertical crack uh, in oft, often sedimentary rocks, but can be found in others, uh, which are 90 degrees are at right angles to the bedding plane. So if we pick out the bedding planes first, can just see like this in this case the horizontal so there are your bedding planes that I've just drawn in red if we now look for well, what's 90 degrees to them what's at right angles to these red lines you join to these vertical lines just here all right and you can see they run up here as well so 90 degrees to the bedding planes again similar to bedding planes in the sense that it, they're a weakness increase uh, exposure to erosion but they also more importantly increase exposure to weathering uh, and we're going to look at that a bit later on in the course but yeah it's a, it's a weakness in the geological structure Right, folks, next element of geological structure is, well, we'll call it strata. Uh, and it's just really just means the layers of different rocks. All right. So a bit like a cake. If you look at this, we've got one layer of rock, another layer of rock, different color, another layer of rock. And it carries on. There's five or six just in this photograph. So strata is different layers of rock the next one is folding or folds and you can see here uh, and I've actually drawn these red lines on if you follow the bedding planes or the strata you can see that they're not kind of in a line uh, they bend and buckle and crumple uh, this example is called the Lulworth crumple in Dorset uh, and they're formed by tectonic pressure basically millions of years ago so if you think of uh, pressure being applied from this side and that side and it's being pushed together like a concertina effect you get this kind of effect so they fold and twist and buckle and crumple again as with the previous three it's a weakness and it speeds up erosion and I think you can actually see uh, a bit of a bit of debris at the, the, the cliff foot now there's two different types of folds where you've got a u-shaped fold like this it's called oopsie daisy <laughs> it's called a syncline that's spelled s y n c l i n e and when you've got a kind of A shape like this where my cursor is that's called an anticline all right so syncline is folded in this way anticline is folded uh, the opposite way right then the next learning objective is to be crystal clear between the meaning of the words dip and profile all right so we'll take the meaning of the word profile first 
in the in the sense of a cliff. The cliff profile is kind of the I think of it as the side view. Yeah, if you were to describe my profile, careful folks, don't be too uh, insulting. You'd probably say plump, round, overweight, possibly. Yeah, all those lovely descriptors to describe me. I need to, I need to uh, stop eating Mars bars, drinking fizzy drinks, and, and go for a run. I think, but hey ho, we're not perfect, are we? Uh, yeah. So these two cliffs have got very different profiles. The one on the left, if you just think about it and describe it for a sec, it's steep, almost vertical. It's tall, probably fifty to a hundred meters tall in height. And it's also got some features such as maybe wave cut notches. Uh, yeah, it might have other features as well, like terraces. But <clears throat> so the definition of profile is the shape and features of the cliff. All right, from the side. The cliff on the right is very different. If we describe this cliff, then it's probably less than six or seven meters tall so it's not as tall as the one on the left it's also not as steep it's definitely not vertical you could probably walk down it uh, without doing yourself too much of an injury whereas if you try and walk off the one on the left you're gonna die uh, so yeah it's a curved profile it's more it's more slumped you could describe it by its process so it's slumped it's not as tall as the one on the left which is very tall and steep all right so that's what profile means think what does what's kev's profile uh, and that will help you not get mixed up with the next keyword okay then you're probably never ever going to forget what uh, the cl cliff profile is so what is dip if i refer to dip what am i talking about well I'm actually referring to the layers uh, of rock, the strata of rock, or the bedding planes. And I'm thinking about what angle is it. So in this case, we've got to be crystal clear. The profile... Oh dear. <laughs> the profile is... Let me get my draw pen. Here we go. Tall, vertical that is the profile we've got features like caves possibly wave cut notches uh, they're all part of the cliff profile the dip angle of the layers of rock try and pick it out folks if you can try and figure out well, what is the angle of the dip i'll draw it on in a sec and the dip angle in this case is horizontal because the layers of rock have formed one on top of another like this now every year no matter what I do or what I say students mingle these words up and they get zero out of six on an exam question because they talk about hot vertical dip creating a horizontal profile which doesn't make sense in this case your input and your geological structure all to do with geology is horizontal your dip is horizontal it's level this creates your output which is your vertical tall cliff okay we'll do another one Right, folks, another cliff. So, just draw on or follow with your eyes the cliff profile. Think about it. What What is it in this picture? How would you describe it? All right, and then I'll draw it on. Also look at the dip angle of the layers of rock. Draw them on with your finger. Just follow it with your eyes. Make sure you get it. So, here we go, then. The profile is this all right that is the cliff profile it is steep but not vertical it is tall 
Uh, and what else could you say? We've got some erosional features such as uh, caves at the cliff foot. It's also got a, a change in kind of gradient, if you like, a change in profile halfway up. So that is the profile side view. The dip angle in this case, it's not quite horizontal. It's slightly angled towards the land. All right. So if the land is to the right hand side, and obviously the ocean and the sea is to the left, then it's dipping downwards towards the land. All right. Now, dip angle can refer to strata and different layers of rock. It can also refer to bedding planes in sedimentary rocks. All right. Another one, just to see if we've got it. This one's a bit of a more shocking picture, folks. I nicked it some, from somewhere off the internet. Uh, right then, so profile is... Profile, again, similar to the last one. It's steep, almost vertical. Dip angle is sloping or dipping landwards towards the land. All right. Right, folks, uh, geology fest there, isn't it? So, yeah, make notes, complete the task headlands and base sketch and read the information on page 17. Bring these uh, notes if you do any diagrams or sketches, fantastic. Uh, bring them to lesson, nice and neat and tidy. If you need to copy them up again, uh, things sub-edited, you know, then please do so. I'll see you next week, all right?